the media the media has a, a very important role to play uh, in the processes of democracy when you are looking at political uh, players especially uh, women and female political players the media needs to create an enabling environment uh, we need to have uh, a system where we are trusted by women I think there have been instances in the past where uh, women leaders generally and more specifically in political office feel that the media uh, you know uh, tend to want to focus on negative aspects we are not issue based when it comes to women uh, in political office so we need to create a safe space an enabling environment a, a platform that uh, women politicians feel we are treating them the same way that we are treating uh, male politicians but also at the same time be sensitive to the multiple roles that they play as well and be sensitive to societal norms um, and focus on the issues if someone is running for uh, a local government office or they are running to be MP let's uh, take them to task in terms of what is it they are bringing to the table how are they going to save the expectations and interests of the constituencies that they are uh, that they purport to to represent so i think as long as we create that very fair and balanced atmosphere we will find that the female politicians we have more trust in the media i i believe that um, now media houses have more female reporters than before so it's important as well to try and have a mix of the male reporters and female reporters interacting with uh, uh, with the uh, the political players because sometimes i think um, the female politicians may feel that because they are uh, the person asking them the question is male they may not understand the sensitivities of certain ways that they want to respond to questions. So I think uh, we have made progress in terms of uh, newsrooms. You have a lot more female reporters. The Mashingo Mira example we were given that there are more female reporters in that newsroom. It does help because I think then when you have uh, that kind of uh, balance, we then uh, are projecting um, a scenario where we do understand where the female uh, uh, politicians are coming from. My, my position is that to me the media was more problematic than being a solution. My experience, rightly or wrongly, is that our media is highly polarized. Highly, highly polarized. Uh, if you want an opinion you have to read everything. Then you make up your own mind. If you pick this print media, that print media, that print media, on the same article, it's like a donkey, a chicken, and an ant. This is what it is in Zimbabwe. So, especially towards election time, the journalists, rightly or wrongly, appear to be in various camps the pro the opposition uh, then they are not focusing on issues the electorate need to know the there were some wrong teachings like if you don't like a party you don't put an X, you write, you put a tick. By so doing, educating the masses that way, that paper is already disqualified. You know, I wish there is demonstration of political maturity in the media and treat issues as issues. And when I'm giving you my opinion, I should be able to say 
this is now my opinion so that people judge me and not the system because I will now be putting my own interpretation of the system. Regrettably, no. And unfortunately for, for the media, we seem to be in perpetual election mode from the day the, the results are announced to the next day we cast the ballot. We are always in perpetual mode of elections. Even now, if you read the papers, the by-elections are creating unnecessary dissonance where we should by now demonstrate maturity and know that this is procedure. And lastly, how important are these trainings, trainings like these ones? Do you think they have a potential of perhaps turning things around? If there is the political will, because when you go to your newsrooms, it's a different ball game. You can attend, you can be a professional, but you have to earn a living for the family. So you do what you are told to do. You can write good stories, be objective, but nobody will publish them. So what do you do? You also told the lie. If you are said told to sensationalize, you do what the game wants you to do. And I'm hoping that professional level prevails. Yes, I really believe media can produce wonders to us if we have an impartial media. Some other media houses are not representing uh, the, the, the information that is supposed to be known by women as they participate in politics. We find uh, a lot of uh, information that is not necessary, that is not of public interest, which are uh, coming in the domain, yet it's not, it's not helping the communities. I wish for the media to represent women who are participating and representing uh, people in politics. Uh, they, they must concentrate more on the developmental issues that women are bringing in, in, in words. So I am sure if media is done the way it's supposed to be done, I'm sure it's going to be a tool which is going to elevate a lot of women in offices and also attract and motivate other women that are supposed to come up uh, in politics. Coming to this workshop, what has been of interest to you? You've been very vocal. Yes. Uh, what, what exactly has been the highlight for you in finally coming face to face with the journalists and having a conversation with them? I, I realized that at times uh, the people that are in office, like myself and my counsel, we are not also taking part in involving the media in our day-to-day -day work that we are doing in our different constituencies, in our different wards. I think we should also make a deliberate effort to involve them whenever we are doing our developmental work in our, in our wards, as we are doing service delivery to our people. We must involve them. But I, I, I also liked one of the facilitators, uh, Mr. Tavanumpov, said, uh, media uh, is a very big tool, it's a very good tool in terms of uh, making sure that what are uh, being done in, in different constituencies get to the people, people get to know what is happening. But he emphasized on the, on the issue that uh, we are going to start now. What we've been doing wrong, we are going to correct and maybe start moving forward uh, doing the correct things. That is maybe to, to have our words our constituencies on the vicinity so that people know that great work is going on but only we need support of the community of partners that are partnering the government the efforts to have all these issues of development going on one of the also things that came out is that uh, we, instead of women uh, being seen more in the media we have uh, a decline in female participation and in the coverage of women in the media. I think one of the exercises we did showed that we have few sources who are female politicians or female, even those who are not politicians, we can't see them in the, in, in the newspapers. So this also was a mental given to us journalists that we have to make sure that we cover women, that we 
ensure the participation of female, the voices of female politicians, because they are doing a lot at grassroots level, but we are not amplifying those things in the media. From here, uh, how are you going to proceed with your work to make sure that you improve the situation? I think at a personal level, I would like to have an intentional approach to sourcing for my stories, basically. I will ask myself if, I, I think as journalists, we have this usual thing of, uh, if I want to speak to politics, if you do a political story, I know the usual sources that I'm going to approach. I think from here, the idea is to question who else can speak to this issue who is not male, who is not known, and who has not been amplified. So I think we have women who are willing to participate, but we are not giving them the opportunity. And we have women who are fearful, but we have not made them understand what benefits uh, they can get from actually being visible and being focal. We need to write, especially the developmental stories, it's going to do with what women's participation in politics. We need to unravel some of the challenges uh, which these women are actually facing, so that the society at large, they will now understand it now. The issues we always, we should not always blame the, these women, but there's some issues, especially like uh, uh, traditional or custom setups, which need to be changed. Is it? But it's now our duty as journalists to unravel those issues, to take them to the society. You so, know, for uh, these women, women as good as men, is it? There's it's about to be use of gender equality when it comes to political participation. For this, for that to happen, this is now our duty as journalists to to bring forward those issues. You know to educate the society, to enlighten the society. You know, women are also good as men, but because of these issues, or because of these factors, they, you can see that women are also what, they're also good, especially as good, as good leaders, or they're also good as well, political leaders. The reason why we brought councillors from the local government sector is because the percentage representation of women in local government continues to decline with each and every election. If we look at our past three elections in Zimbabwe, I will start with the 2008 elections. The percentage representation of women in local government was at 18%. With the 2013 elections, the percentage representation of women declined by two percentage points to uh, 16%. Now with the last harmonized 2018 elections, the percentage representation of women declined by another two percentage points to 14%. So women are lagging behind in terms of decision-making structures at the local level. And if we look at the services offered by local authorities, the major consumers are women. And yet these women are not represented in decision making structures. So the aim of bringing the women is for them to be able to be used to engage with the media, for them also to be able to develop strategies around communication where they engage the media as a partner that can help to improve the participation and representation of women at the local government level. We, we completed the two days of uh, discussions. What's your assessment? What was particularly interesting about these discussions to you? What was particularly interesting is that the discussions, one, they were real discussions. We had people who are on the ground who were able to give us actual information of what is happening. If we look at electoral systems, we managed to get the clear picture of which most of the journalists, some of them managed to get such information for the first time. We also had councillors who were giving us evidence of what is happening on the ground. If we look at issues to do with the political violence, if we look at issues to do with campaigning and everything. So I can say that we had um, interactions and discussions that were really positive and objective from both the politicians and 